here's one of this year's most anticipated camera phones, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. What new camera innovations has Xiaomi come up with, and what else does this phone have to offer? I'm Will for DSM Arena, and let's find out in our Xiaomi 14 Ultra review. Last year's Xiaomi 13 Ultra was one of the best camera phones around, so Xiaomi didn't need to change a lot with the newest model. Still, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra's main cam has a newer 1-inch sensor and a truly variable aperture. Plus, the zoom cameras are able to focus close to take macro shots. And the phone packs the latest flagship chipset and is made from more advanced build materials. On the outside, the phone looks almost the same as before, but the circle holding the cameras is now even bigger. The back is once again made of a synthetic leather, but Xiaomi says that this variant is six times more wear resistant than last year's. The frame is made of a new aluminum alloy and again overlaps from the sides up onto the back itself. Overall, the phone brings a unique and premium feel. Like before, you get IP68 rated ingress protection too, so there's that extra peace of mind. For an even more unique experience, Xiaomi sells a set of accessories, which include a case, a detachable hand grip, a lanyard, decorative rings for the camera bump, and another ring threaded for 67mm lens filters. The grip has a built-in 1500mAh battery and a USB-C port, which adds some longevity to the whole ensemble, while also allowing it to be charged without disassembly. You also get some extra functionality. There's a two-stage shutter release button, a zoom rocker, a dial for exposure compensation, and a button for video recording. The accessories look and feel premium and lend the phone a real camera-like appearance. You'd have to decide if the extra couple hundred bucks is worth it though. The display of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is a 6.73 inch LTPO OLED with a 1440p resolution and a 120Hz refresh rate. Xiaomi has replaced the Gorilla Glass Victus of the predecessor with their in-house Xiaomi Shield Glass, which is meant to offer 10 times better drop resistance. The 14 Ultra's display is quite premium. It's sharper than your average panel at 522 ppi. It supports HDR10 Plus video and Dolby Vision. There's also support for 12-bit color, as well as Google's Ultra HDR standard for displaying 10-bit images across different apps. When it comes to brightness, we measured over 700 nits maximum with the manual slider, and this boosted to nearly 1300 nits in auto mode when in bright conditions. And thanks to LTPO tech, the screen's high refresh rate is extra adaptive to save energy if the brightness is high enough. We saw it dial down as low as 10 hertz when idling, and 1 hertz should be possible as well. For audio, there's a pair of stereo speakers. The 14 Ultra matched the previous model's very good rating for loudness and improves on the sound quality with a slightly livelier mid-range while maintaining good bass. For biometric input, there's an under-display fingerprint reader. It's well-placed and responsive. The global version of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra comes with 512 gigs of UFS 4.0 storage, and that's not expandable through microSD. The software interface of the 14 Ultra is Xiaomi's new HyperOS. It actually looks and behaves a lot like the previous MIUI, and long-term Xiaomi users will feel right at home. You can check out our dedicated video for HyperOS if you want to learn more about its specific features. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra has an IR blaster, so you can use the phone to control appliances with. And software support includes 4 years of major OS updates and 5 years of security patches from Xiaomi. Under the hood of the Xiaomi 14 Ultra is Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. It's the same cutting-edge chipset you'd find in most other 2024 Android flagships. This chipset has proven to be a notable upgrade from last year's flagship silicon. In benchmarks, the 14 Ultra demonstrated excellent numbers, scoring in the top half of the class. And while there is a performance mode in the battery settings, it didn't really affect benchmark scores in a meaningful way. The phone is snappy overall, and heavy gaming and multitasking are a breeze. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra does a good job regulating its thermals as well. During our prolonged stress test, it maintained a high performance level without significant throttling. The global version of the phone is equipped with a 5000 mAh battery, which is the same capacity as last year's model. Overall, the battery life is far from class leading, but we wouldn't call it a deal breaker either. The 14 Ultra earned an active use score of 11 hours and 25 minutes, with okay results overall, except for a below average score in the video playback test. 
For charging, the 14 Ultra ships with the same 90 watt adapter that came with the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. With it, we were able to charge from 0 to 52% in just 15 minutes, and a full charge took 34 minutes. Quite speedy compared to some other popular flagships. Now the star attraction, the cameras. There's a 50 megapixel main cam, a 50 megapixel 3.2 times telephoto, a 50 megapixel 5 times telephoto, and a 50 megapixel ultra wide cam with autofocus. Like I mentioned before, the main cam packs a newer sensor, as well as a lens with a continuously variable aperture. The stepless adjustment is found within the Pro Mode. The aperture can be adjusted to anywhere between f1.6 to f4.0. That's opposed to the setup of the previous model, which toggled between open and stop down. The other major development is in the close focusing capabilities of the two telephoto cams to take close-ups with. Anyway, let's get into the camera quality, starting with the main cam. It captures great looking photos, as expected. Detail is excellent and is rendered in a relatively natural way. Only when pixel peeping might you find some very intricate textures with a more artificial look. Colors are expressive without going overboard. Dynamic range is wide, and noise is very well controlled too. If you'd like to get some artificial vignetting in a moodier look, you can switch to the Leica Authentic mode. We explored a little how the variable aperture affects sharpness. In good light, the phone will normally set it at f2.0. When you further stop that down, it makes little to no difference, especially with further away subjects. There's a more visible effect on the depth of field with nearby subjects. With those, you'll sometimes want to stop down a little to make sure you get more of your subject in sharp focus. The main cam's 2x digital zoom looks great, with very good detail even when pixel peeping. In low light, the 14 Ultra captures excellent photos. You get pleasant looking exposures, with well retained highlights and developed shadows. Even in mixed lighting, the white balance is dependable, and the color rendition is easy on the eyes. Viewing from up close, there's very good detail. The Xiaomi strikes a nice balance between keeping the detail up and removing noise. Now the 3.2x telephoto cam. It produces quite possibly the sharpest 3x images we've seen to date. Plus the dynamic range is excellent, white balance is on point, and colors are vibrant. But the real treat comes with close-ups. Even at minimum focusing distances, this camera maintains excellent sharpness and is capable of some stunning results. The difference compared to the previous model is night and day. Speaking of night, even in the dark, the 3.2x telephoto will hardly leave you wanting. Exposures are on point, dynamic range is very good, and there's plenty of fine detail. The revamped 5x telephoto doesn't disappoint either, capturing great photos during the day. It's also an expert at close-ups, as promised. Here too, you can see the level of improvement compared to the previous model when it comes to close-up photography. If you're after more reach, you can achieve 10 times with the help of digital zoom, and the results aren't too bad. The sharpness is good, but the contrast can be a bit much. The 5 times telephoto isn't as good as the 32 times one in low light. The detail is there, but the dynamic range is somewhat limited. And with the phone prioritizing highlights, you may often get shots that are darker than ideal. Light sources may come out more orange here too. The ultra-wide camera's photos are very likable. Other than a hint of graininess, there's little in the way of flaws. There's very good detail, great colors, and wide dynamic range. And this camera has autofocus too, so you can shoot close subjects. At night, the ultra-wide showing is okay. Its colors are a little anemic, and detail is somewhat sketchy when viewed from up close. The Xiaomi 14 Ultra can record video in up to 4K at 60fps with all of its cameras, and the main cam can also record 4K at 120fps. The 4K video quality from this phone is quite possibly the best we've seen so far. The four rear cameras have stellar dynamic range and color reproduction. The level of detail is excellent from all of them. Okay, maybe more like very good on the ultra wide. Stabilization is also great on the 14 Ultra. Walking shake is ironed out, and pans come out very smooth. At night, the Xiaomi does reasonably well too. The main camera is about on par with the Galaxy S24 Ultra for detail, but here you get wider dynamic range. Selfies come from a 32 megapixel front facing cam with fixed focus. They're decent, but fall behind the excellent quality we get on the other cameras. Still, skin tones and colors in general are likable, and we have no complaints about dynamic range. 
So there you have it, the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. You get a sharp high-end display, a flagship chipset, great speakers, and fast charging. And of course, a nearly flawless camera system with close focusing zoom. It's not perfect though. Battery life is below average. Selfies leave more to be desired. And this is among the priciest phones out there right now. But if you're after a flagship with cutting edge cameras and price is no object, then the Xiaomi 14 Ultra could be worth looking into. Thanks for watching guys. If you're looking for alternative camera phones, you can check out our reviews of the Galaxy S24 Ultra and the Vivo X100 Pro. Let us know what you think and I'll see you on the next one.